Welcome to Real Liberty Media right here on a Friday at noon central, RLMRadio.xyz. What matters? Uh, Ponder Gander. So, what am I trying to say? Well, let's talk about it a little bit. I've got the great Grimner along with me today, uh, co-hosting for me, and this is uh, off the cuff. I didn't do radio this week, didn't uh, build a broadcast, so we're going to throw it out here. Hey, Graham, how you doing, brother? Hey, Vinny, how the hell are you doing? Well, doing, doing. So, yeah, I had uh, some friends stop by and whiz, like, way into the morning, and um, and the plus, I didn't spend enough time this week to build a broadcast, so I'm just throwing it out there, and um, I thought I'd ask you to come along, and we'll, we'll just go back and forth, but what I want to build into is um, trying to outline what all this occupation is around us and uh, where my involvement in the uh, Bundy Ranch standoff is uh, and how that relates to actual freedom. Uh, a, all right. Let, a, let's, start off, let's start off with some terminology there. Okay. Um, occupation. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about it. What's the occupation? All right. So for the Bundy Ranch, right? In the no, in the general. Mayor. Pardon? Just in general. Okay. To occupy would be to um, be in a space. Uh, you can, I guess you can occupy, or your mind can be occupied in ideology as opposed to an actual physical place. Uh, there's, there's a big contrast in, in this world that we're about, and the narrative changes. And as we say here about uh, the clap, that's uh, the corporate lame-ass propaganda that uh, abounds, and that's what we're here at Real Liberty Media doing is to oppose that and give a that alternative view. And that's sad that it has to be called alternative. Hey, Moosey. Um, so where were we at? Orwellian, 1984, uh, uh, where speech is hate. We've got a big move for censoring folks from Facebook and Twitter. You know, whether you like them or not, uh, whether what they say is hate. It's good for them to say it. We want to know what people uh, have in their mind. I say guard your words because they are held against you. And when you go beyond into that physical occupation from your mind, then you know, you, you're opposing this beast, this uh, powers that occupy our nation and the world. Um, then you put yourself in a position of vulnerability where you, you could lose your life or liberty. And as Hal talks about, is uh, to stay out of that. Uh, that jurisdiction. Don't don't place yourself in there. And if you're going into a courtroom to try to beat them, that's about a no-win situation. And the Bundys ended up in, uh, well, Cliven was in for 700 days, and people like to say they were exonerated or that they were um, uh, acquitted, but that's not true. It's not over. And that was, uh, that's what I said to Cliven Bundy at, in front of the sheriff's department there in Las Vegas, when uh, he asked for questions from media, I said, I believe I'll start this out when uh, the hands went up and uh, AP and all the other folks, and I asked them, I said, where are we at? We're right back where we started from, and, and that's what it is. Now, how did we get to there? And uh, Circle, uh, She's been holding holding me to account, and I've not uh, fulfilled this obligation to tell this in a concise manner. So maybe uh, maybe I can at least get back to that outline. Um, Bundy, uh, he was the last rancher standing in southern Nevada out of 50-odd uh, ranchers that they had either uh, moved off the land and taken their uh, property back from uh, you know grazing and water and so forth. We'll have to talk about how and why that came to. But so here he comes, the BLM, in 2014, and start rounding up his cattle after uh, over 20 odd years of him refusing to to pay extortion to the Bureau of Land Ma Management um, in grazing fees. So why is he paying grazing fees? Well, you go back to the establishment of the BLM before that. Um, the uh, uh, there are two agencies that combined really to bring that back, and before that, the Taylor Grazing Act. So what happened in the early 1900s was uh, it was a free-for-all range war. People uh, uh, piled their cattle and sheep upon the land and, and ate it down to, to near dirt. But what it does, it, it does rebound. 
Um, there's some exceptions to some sensitive areas that I could see that need uh, protection. Anyways, so we come back into the 1970s and we have uh, this uh, Endangered Species Act and all that stem from there. And uh, it's different critters in different parts of the country, but for uh, Clive and Bundy and others, it was the, uh, the desert tortoise. They say that the cows is killing the tortoise. Uh, I'm still wanting to, to tell the the uh, story of the tortoise and the hare, uh, and and rewrite the Osop's uh, fable. But the uh, the tortoise is the bad guy, and he's really not a tortoise. He's an impersonator, and I'm talking about Kieran Suckling from the Center of Biological Diversity. And what they do, they go around su suing the government and making big bucks, and then uh, affecting policy change. So it, it's a uh, Hal, help me out. What what would you call that? Are they uh, these uh, non-governmental agencies or organizations uh, are behind uh, statutes and legislation and stuff like that? And then uh, I, I, let, let me let me tell this story. I'm on the Appalachian Trail a couple of years ago, and typical of of people that enjoy the land, they they believe that land should be protected. So I'm talking to this young couple and, and tell them I was at the Bundy Ranch and uh, prior our connection, our, our vibe is is in sync. And as soon as I said that, there was a switch, click. Wow, you're one of these whatever, uh, and you know you hate the land and all this and biodiversity. You know this is this is what I'm getting from it. No, that this is this big disconnect. People on the left. I'll call it uh, the so-called environmentalists are are tricked into thinking they're doing good. I'm going to tell you that it's not true. That the tortoise is actually benefit benefited by cattle on the land. Why? Um, now you you may think this odd, but what do tortoises eat? They like stuff that's wet and moist. So there lies the patties on the ground, and. Uh, you can hear a poop sometimes. That's uh, that's another story. That's what they've uh, the the other side opposing the Bundys would call uh, the supporters a poot, and they came up with that because uh, Dwayne Emer built a ditch up in Malheur as a bunker, and they said that it was the crapper, the latrine. Anyway, so Grant Thornton and Captain Carl and I uh, came together to uh, uh, define poot as an acronym. Uh, they came up with patriots uh, of overthrowing oppressive tyrants. And I had originally came out with uh, people opposing uh, uh, oppressive ty tyranny. Hey, Grimner Putin. Hey, Grimner. Come back in with me here and, and rein me in because I go a hundred directions and this is what Circle's trying to, to get a hold of me with that. Throw that Circle loop around me and, and pull me back in. So help me, help me, help me. <laughs> well, uh, my, my, my main question, okay, when, when was the uh, original Bundy Ranch standoff when you were out there standing under the bridge? April the 12th of 2014. I'd arrived okay. the day so before. So five, five, five plus years ago. Uh-huh. Yep, it's been over five years now. And And at this point in time... The Bundys are exonerated, more or less. Mm, no. Uh, and yes. In the eyes of uh, so many Americans, there was hundreds of people that came out there, hundreds that day, and over uh, over a period of time, um, some thousands of people. I got there on the uh, the 11th, uh, Friday, the day before, and uh, I, I set up camp, and, and I laid in and went back and forth between there and Vegas over some several weeks there. And over these past few years, uh, look more and more at all the information relative to it. So how do we come to where we are right now? Well, it's, it's incremental, step by step. But were they exonerated in the eyes of many Americans? Yes. How? By the uh, presentation of the First and Second Amendment. The First Amendment is really, uh, there's not much uh, chance of safety without the Second Amendment. But can if you go to, if you go to guns, are you going to win against the government? Not usually, right? Uh, some people think that was a win, but it was a postponement. And uh, 
the feds, I think they were very shocked to uh, to find themselves uh, exposed. What what happens? Hold on a sec, Missy. What happens uh, with the federal courts, especially even in state courts and municipal courts? The, these set of rules are stacked against you. So, 97% conviction rate. Uh, most people uh, take a plea. Uh, those that go to trial, only probably 3% of those people ever uh, go to uh, not a innocent charge or not being declared innocent, but not guilty. Big difference, right? So, right. What happened was is the prosecution and uh, the uh, investigation was in such collusion and corruption and uh, with Giglio uh, and Brady violations that uh, Judge Gloria Navarro could no longer cover up the crime of the state and had to throw it out with uh, prejudice. Okay, Moosey says, I understand uh, firsthand knowledge of the Bundy Ranch incident, but there uh, there have been other similar situations. Yeah, they were just one in a series. You've got uh, ranch confiscation, people uh, killed and uh, or arrested, put in prison for the rest of their life uh, because of the criminal uh, justice. And, yeah, it's the system, all right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just us that get it on the, the bad end of the beat there. Right, but... Um the thing is, okay, and you've been focused on this like yeah. a laser yeah. for for these five years. Yeah, well, especially the last two uh, in the beginning, and then you know I the other stuff in radio and so forth. But this is, uh, I think that, and Flash said yesterday, twenty years from now, this is going to be a big deal. Why is it so important? And, and what's going on now with the uh, censor of, of people on on the internet for their speech? Uh, you know, step by step, right? Slowly it turned. And so why, Moosey, on one is because uh, I'm a semi-expert on this because of my involvement as a witness for the uh, Bundys. Uh, out of, I think, 1,400 and something people, I was number 303. But I've been called, I think uh, my testimony was very, uh, it, it, well, they, they say that the uh, standoff was... Uh, well, we call it, uh, and I quote Evan Bundy, a peaceful pushback. And so they, the feds say that uh, people were there to incite violence and uh, Bundys were headed this up. Now, uh, Ammon and uh, Jason Patrick and myself were, he, well, Ammon was listening to Jason and I talk outside the trailer up there uh, where the uh, marshalling point was for, for folks to come. Uh, and heard us talking. He came out and he says, I've been listening to you guys. I didn't know he was in there. And I'm really uh, liking what you're saying. What Jason and I were talking about, whether there would be people there to incite violence. You know, they always send in the provocateurs. Even if the provocateur unknowingly is a provocateur just because they're an idiot and want to uh, see violence. And there were people there like that. So I posted in memories on Facebook, I seen it, uh, that I was out there. I said, there's good folks and bad folks on both sides. Now, who headed up the, the federales was Dan Love. Evil bastard for sure. Lots of history on him uh, bragging about um, people he'd uh, caused to suicide themselves and other things. Very bad man. And this is typical of what we find in these uh, uh, militarized uh, agencies of the federal government. The Department of Interior, U.S. Forest Service, the Bureau of Land Management, uh, U.S. Fish and Game. Uh, and so forth. They come, I mean, it's like, these are the same, it would be like a strike team they, they brought back from Afghanistan or something. Uh, this isn't, the government, you know, they're, they're not there as their own entity. They don't exist to protect themselves, and they have uh, no right of power over the individual. And that's all gone in, uh, it's convoluted in so many ways. And people say, well, we need law. Yes, we do need law. Law uh, settles peace, but it's convoluted in the legal of the bar association, and uh, this is where the disconnect comes in. You think you, well, the Bundys thought, yeah, you know what we're doing here? We want to make this a point and issue, and we want to bring it to the courts because, you know, we want the truth to be told, but that's not how the court works. Uh, they, okay, okay, really. Uh-huh. Um, see, Lucy's asking some really good questions right good. there now. Okay. 
said, she says, still the sole focus on this one incident. What else needs to happen in regards to it? Do you think the Bundys are trying to move on from it? What are you trying to accomplish? Why keep repeating the story? What's the point? Because it's not over. And what so in, what is so important about this, Moosey, is that um, the right to redress government. Now, they came along with court orders saying, uh, get your cows but, but what, what is your What is your goal in all this? To make sure that the story re- remains and is, uh, is told in truth because the mainstream media, um, they don't tell the whole story. It's just like uh, how it works in the court. It's, it's uh, more of who asked the question wins, as Ammon Bundy said. If you control the narrative, how can you lose, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, you could, yeah, but who's controlling the narrative? It's obviously, it's not you, it's not the Bundys. The, the narrative is being controlled as it's always controlled via the clap. Mm-hmm. So why, why do I stay on this? Because yeah. it's important, Lucy, that this, if you shut up, then what? It goes into the memory hole, like so many other people. But what about the Browns, uh, um, Wayne Hayes, uh, the, the list is long. Uh, what about the political prisoners? We've got uh, Todd Engel and uh, Greg Burleson and uh, Jerry DeLemis, uh other folks that are, uh, 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 Greg uh, Doucet, sorry, um, on and on and on. The guy up in Missouri, um, they're serious about it. I, I watched a video uh, a day or so ago where they went to uh, do audits on police stations, and they went in and asked for a form for uh, to file a complaint against an officer. And out of uh, some, I think, 40 or 50 uh, departments they went to, only three just like, okay, here's your form. The rest of them wanted to say, who are you? What's the deal? Uh, uh, you got to go through me gatekeepers. So, you know, protecting, uh, standing guard at that, that thin blue line. My life. Correct. My thin blue line right here on the uh, audacity is a lot, lo- a lot lower than yours is, it looks like, too, by the way. Well, then, then speak louder. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if I move the mic. Hey, that made a big difference. Look at that. I'll put the, no. the mic. Not too close. <laughs> right about there. Okay. So bring me back on track. Where are we at? Why is it so important? What's going to happen if... Uh, and they're going to come back for the Bundy. So it's not over. It is not over. There's still that quarter, court order to uh, remove the cattle. And it was just uh, here recently uh, reaffirmed. Um, but Cliven had sued uh, um, that the uh, the federal government has no right to claim the lands. There, there we got to go back to Hal Anthony, the difference between public land and public domain. What, uh, what happened was... is they, uh, the Congress was uh, opening up lands out here west. They wanted to encourage folks to come out here, so you know they gave over homestead and and other rights uh, to own, like the grass is growing on the land. Uh, if if the cows out there grazing, uh, that's <coughs> and they're established uh, how they come to ownership of all that. It's not like, oh, I've uh, just going to run my cows out here, right? We we go back into so, the Taylor Grazing Act. To just just to be clear, just to be perfectly clear on the land. Mm-hmm. Leasing that land is it his land? Does it is he is he on that land okay. according to the state illegally? What it is is eighty miles about north of Las Vegas, northeast up uh, Interstate 15, going up to Utah. And right before the Arizona Strip is Mesquite, Nevada. Down about eight miles below there, along the Virgin River, is Bunkerville. And then past it is an old uh, town of uh, Riverside. It's an old crossing that has uh, been there and occupied uh, over time for centuries by um, the natives and uh, the Spanish Trail and the Mormon Trail. Now, it wasn't just a single roadway, this trail. It shifted depending on times of the year and conditions. And so, and, and the Spanish trail was um, more of a mule train type of deal. Um, 
And along comes uh, later on, we get the highway. I believe that's Highway 91. Uh, and I've got some video of an old section of that where it crossed up in the desert. Uh, but anyways, the the highway system, America in the old days, you know, was not connected. Uh, of course, the westward movement and so forth, and then the trains and all that come along. And then highways and finally the interstate system from Eisenhower. Um, then you got ingress and egress. Again, Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, where you want to be able to understand uh, the actuality of, of um, what it is for producers on the land and so forth. Uh, very important. That's where wealth comes from. Uh, in the in the occupation, they come to uh, seize all the wealth. So you got to get people off the land, and how to do so uh, by any means necessary. Uh, they start out slow. This has been a long uh, process here for Bundy. Um, and he's saying, no, not just because you say so. How did that happen? Well, they, they start changing the laws. What was the BLM? But they're supposed to be there to uh, help manage the uh, the lines, make sure that this range war is stopped. Uh, this is where your cattle are and so forth. Cliven has 160 acres down there, just uh, along the river by Riverside, N Nevada. And adjoining is... Uh, what some people call public domain, uh, or they call it public lands, but uh, in, inside of public lands is the public domain also. These are disposed of by Congress to the people. Again, you know, they wanted to populate the, uh, the West and encourage folks to go out there uh, and so forth. Now, Clive and Bundy's family has been in this area since uh, the uh, just past the mid-1800s. Uh, of course, my family from Tennessee over around Kingsport, there or in Kingsport, uh, from the 1700s. I can go back there, and I, I met the, uh, uh, the lady that is direct descended of my uh, ancestor from there, still on the land, a different name. Uh, but still, nonetheless, uh, I can't go back there and say, hey, this is uh, uh, from my ancestors, and I want some of it, too. No, it doesn't work like that. Clive and Bundy, well, they try to tell the story then that... Uh, it gives you connection, but it doesn't establish the right of ownership to these uh, properties, like the, the water and the grass. Um, but he does establish that with his father's purchase and other ranch there in a farm, 160 acres in the desert along the river. Uh, and uh, surrounding that is many thousands of acres. Uh, I want to tell you, if you're not familiar with what the, the western desert oh, looks like. Yes, tell me this. Uh huh. The title. A certificate of title for that property. Whose whose name is on it? Who holds it? Now this see Don Don Quixote. Uh, he tried to make a point of this that uh, Cliven doesn't own the the ranch itself. It's in a trust. But this is legal protections in a sense, right? This trust. Uh, you know, Mormons are very family patriarchal type. Uh, very big on family and, you know, uh, generations down, even in the back, going backwards, uh, you know, in their, their genealogies and so forth. So it's a big thing for them. So it's not like Clive and Bunny, so I'm going to have this forever. No, my children and their children and their children's children will continue on. Uh, ranching, uh, especially in the desert, is hard work. Yeah, it, uh, well, any, any cowboy ain't uh, generally too lazy, but um, it's a fight to keep... Keep a tradition, in, in a sense, it, that's being opposed. So, so, so the so the title is held by a trust. Yeah, that would be the actual uh, 160 acres itself, included in these. Now, who's who's involved in that trust? The Bundy family and their uh, progeny. I, I I guess I'd call it. Okay, so in that way, the trust owns the land legally by title. Yeah, and you know, a trust in a sense, I guess, would be a legal person in a sense. Uh, don't hold me to legalese, but uh, proper terminology on that. But you know, in Vinny speak, that's what I'd call it. Well, I mean, that's that's is really where where it comes down, right? I mean, you have to know so via their system this this state title system who who has has the the legal right to use that property well clive and bundy i guess he would probably be head of the trust 
So what, I don't know when he passes who it would go to, uh, Ammon or, or Ryan, um, and continue in lineage. In the okay, so if he does hold title to that property via the trust, then why did the BLM come in and say that otherwise? Okay, so he, the farm is in the trust. I'm not sure how that uh, connects exactly to the other property, these uh, title uh, rights, that is water. Um, and, and all this, everybody's gone except for Cliven. So if he's gone, then who gets it? Well, you know, they come in uh, through deception for theft, and then who owns it? Those people that... Uh, you know, are, are part of the caucusocracy. Uh, Frumpy says uh, about the BLM uranium on Clinton and Harry Reid. Um, there's a lot to that, and a lot, a lot to it. And I have not taken it upon myself because there's a lot of convolution and stuff. And mm, yeah, if you want to know about that, you need to go uh, to Laws. He, uh, I, I'll go collect it, uh, a link when we're done and, and bring you back if you come back here to the R log to listen uh, you'll find it there but uh, he goes in very deep about all that stuff other people are too uh, in this uh, collusion Russian collusion with uh, Hillary but, uh, Trump is he in collusion yeah I would say so that's just the nature of the beast right um, warring no, against one another that's act four or whatever it's, it, it doesn't mean anything what you know whose name and yeah Illusion and these Russians versus Americans, or in, in conjunction with Americans, uh, that that's above their pay grade. The, the right, Obamas and the, and the Trumps and the Clintons, they, they 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 just walk out there like they're you know on an infomercial trying to sell you some nonsense. Yeah. Right, but they're not the ones that are actually setting all that stuff up. No, it's been in the making for um, not just years but decades and. Even into prior centuries, this uh, occupation of the world has, has been sitting in place for a very, very long time. Step by step. They're, it's very patient. I mean, uh, 20 years waiting to uh, come collect the cattle because they say they got to kick it off because they're hurting the tortoises. But that that's not true at all. Again, the tortoise is benefited. All life is benefited. Um, so when I was down, uh, I spent 40 days, 28 and... Uh, and 11, uh, there, I guess it was uh, almost 40, just it was running into 40 days on the river. But anyways, so I'm down there, and I brought a bottle of water with me, and after a, a period of time, I, of course, used up that water. There runs a river down there, uh, it, and it's the Virgin River, but they accidentally switched the names of the Virgin River and the Muddy River, and so that was supposed to have been the, the Muddy River. So it runs muddy, uh, but still kind of clear, you know, particles of dirt dirt don't hurt uh but anyways i i I'll go over and visit uh, the bundies and spend the day with them and, and ask them uh i thought sure there maybe be a spring coming up uh, to run in, uh, into the river there but they're way on up in the mountains and the springs come out and then they run back down into the ground so way down in the desert there's not the water but what uh Cliven and other ranchers have done they they pipe the water down into tanks and uh, the cows can go get a drink because they've you know, they'll browse and move so far in a day, but they've got to be within range of water to return, you know, back for a drink at night and then lay down. Uh, what what else lives out of that water? Do they fence the, uh, the other animals out of that water? No. So otherwise, animals that can live there uh, are there because of the rancher, because of the water, and because of all the improvements that they do. The BLM was supposed to, you know, the fees were supposed to, uh, pay for improvements, and uh, but now it goes that it's still it, and uh, then use the money against the, the people. Um, but there we've got uh, a water tank, and what does the Bundys do? Well, sometimes a baby quail will get up there and uh, fall in and drown, or maybe a lizard, or even just a bug. So what do they do? Well, they'll lay a, a, a stick up in there, a, a branch or a board, where that uh, anything gets in there can crawl back out, preserving life, not. Uh, condemning of life, and that is what Kieran Suckling is trying to to say is the poor little old tortoise. Well, in my my tale of the tortoise and the hare, H A I R, the the tortoise and the hare, hoof and hide the truth. That's the true story of the tortoise and the hare. And Kieran Suckling, I 
uh, cast will cast as the tortoise. And he ain't really a tortoise. He's uh, hiding in that shell. It's a shell game. It's a stalking horse, right? Uh, Al Anthony again. Sunday's right here at Real Liberty Media. Uh, noon on the Pacific side. Noon o'clock. You better come listen if you ain't listening to how all these people that supported the Bundys. Uh, it all falls on deaf ears. How had been had he been heated in the early days? Uh, people wouldn't have been in prison. People wouldn't have been killed. But everybody thinks they have the answer, and so you get busy running down these rabbit holes, and where you end up, not in a good spot. There's many, many people that uh, are silenced forever now because they. Right, tell, tell me this, and, and, and I know it's not directly part of it, but a couple of years after the Bundy situation, after the initial Bundy situation. There was that deal up in Oregon at Malher, whatever, mm-hmm. however you say that. County, yep. Why, why were the Bundys up there? Okay, the uh, the Hammonds were uh, convicted of an arson charge for setting uh, prescribed burns or back burns or setting uh, back burn that is to uh, to burn back into a fire to protect their um, their feedstock and their uh, ranch land. They they have right to many many thousands of acres up there for for cattle. Now the big thing is what shut down grazing, shut down logging. What do we have now? Big huge fires and stuff. It, it's uh, um, compounds the problem. Uh, man has been involved in change the environment, so you just can't turn it back to nature and think it'll go back the way it was. Uh, man on the land uh, with their hand brings improvement and and progress and. The environmental, extreme environmental movement uh, wishes to shut it all down, exclude everybody, and really, for in the, the long run, uh, is to uh, control, of course, all the resources. Uh, if you want to say resource, it's a, a source that lies there. Uh, wealth comes after man takes it in his hand and, and makes product or uh, so forth, uh, the producer. Where are we at now? We're in a service industry in America, uh, where McDonald's and Starbucks and um, AutoZone is uh, where a lot of people are working. Here in Clinton, Arkansas, there's nothing here hardly. Uh, if you get a job, you pretty much want to keep it. There's okay, I, I don't think going. you answered my question, though. All right, try again. Why? Why were the Bundys in up in Oregon? What, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. So, the, so the um, um, the Hammonds they were brought back to court. The judge said, "All right, you got. Uh, I think it was like a year and four months. The another the the son had a little, or uh, the father and the son both had a certain amount of time. Five years, and they did a little bit of time there. And the judge says, "Yeah, go ahead." Then the feds come back and say, "An appeal? No, 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 no. Under this, uh, uh, what was the act? Anyways, it's death penalty act." Um, and it comes about, you know, with this homeland security and all this uh, terrorism and so forth. And anybody that uh, would set a fire on public uh, or, or federal lands, then that's uh, a five-year minimum. So they were called back to jail, and uh, the Bundys, Ryan, uh, Ammon, and uh, uh, some other folks that I know from uh, the Bundy Ranch, they decided to go up there and protest uh, the Hammonds have to go back to prison. And, of course, Trump comes along here recently and pardoned them, right? And now the BLM is giving back their uh, uh, their grays there in, in Oregon. So, man, what a big, terrible circle. The Bundys go there to uh, protest this. Uh, upon the Hammond's decision to uh, not resist and to submit and turn themselves in and go back to prison, uh, somebody planted a seed. Now, this is, a, this is some bit of conspiracy in my mind but realize that uh, all the number of folks that took that uh, to occupy that uh, that little outbuilding out there in in, a, in some uh, wetlands uh, bird sanctuary uh, at least uh, about 17 or 19 of them were uh, insiders they were informants and uh, there for the government uh, so they set things in place to happen. They wanted things to happen, and they, they were working and using trickery. Uh, to, you know, the, they should have left the, the refuge. They should have made it a point 
whatever, maybe a week or something, say, okay, uh, we've made our point and then move to another. But as Ammon said, they want to make a hard stand. Uh, then you get people in there, provocateurs. This is all, uh, well, I won't say common knowledge, but it is that the information is there and it's uh, factual that these uh, people working for the government were coming there trying to get things going. You know, when I went to trial up there with Bruce Doucette uh, in Denver, the uh, I was listening to some testimony from a, a marshal undercover, Marshal Marshal. These, uh, uh, anyways, he is saying in the recording, okay, let's go kidnap this judge and we'll t just take him to the state line and kick him out and tell him don't come back. They're trying to provoke the crime. But you know how the law reads? It, they can do that. There's no problem with the facilitating uh, a crime for the government if they can catch somebody. And that's what we see, right? That's all these FBI busts and stuff for terrorists. How'd they get, how'd they get to there? They, were, they made the crime, facilitated. And I still ain't answered your question. Hold on. I don't think. Um, why'd they go there? In protest. Make a hard stand. In Bunkerville... Is a peaceful pushback. And this is the same thing. So what should have happened? They should have been given trespass tickets. That's what they expected. They wanted, again, to bring the issue to court because they thought uh, truth would prevail. Uh, truth has been pretty hard to cover up against the Bundys. It, it, it comes out. It's pretty miraculous that they uh, are not still languishing in the federal system for the rest of their life. Okay. But the, but the primary... Uh, thing that got the Bundys in jail uh, and in trouble uh, that that brought a lot of this to the head was what happened in Oregon rather they, than what happened in Nevada. No, both actually. They um, they captured them in in Oregon first. They went to trial. Uh, the first round, uh, Ammon, Ryan, uh, Shauna Cox. Uh, uh, Ryan Payne, uh, there's a few others there. Uh, they beat it in court. Again, miraculous. Uh, but did they go free? Nope. Uh, Marcus Mumford was Ammon's attorney, and he, he got beat down and tased in court by by the marshals there for saying, hey, let my man go. Um, and they uh, he, they said, no, we got to hold him for Nevada. Well, show me the warrant. They didn't have no warrant. And he's protesting what they do. Beat him down, tased him. He, he's a, the, mum, the mumbling Mumford or the stuttering lawyer, Marcus Mumford, uh, look him up. Uh, 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 that's how he would <laughs> come about talking in court. Uh, and it's actually kind of effective. It uh, brings more attention and It's for them to jurors uh, to try to uh, uh, d just make out exactly what he's going to say. Uh, so it is an advantage in, in so many ways. There's, there's a lot of information and stuff on Marcus Mumford. I kind of like the guy. Uh, you know, I hate the Bar Association because they are the criminal. And I, I talked there in, in uh, Nevada in the, front, the in front of the federal courthouse there to a few lawyers. And uh, I thought I had a couple of good questions at least. But they do protect themselves to kind of backtrack and uh, make excuse for how the system is. Um, Dan, uh, uh, oh, I forgot his last name. Sorry, Dan. Okay. Davis. Yeah, go ahead. So your primary goal at this point in time, can, with the Bundy situation, and solely with the Bundy situation, because you're not really looking at other ones. I am. No, oh, no, no. That's, that's not true at all. There's, uh, But I'm not uh, bringing it to forbear as far as, you know, postings or whatever on Twitter or covering. Uh, some of it overlaps, but... Uh, some people just rambling, rambling. I'm a great rambler, I guess, but uh, I'm trying to bring in a focus. And in, in early in this series, I said, "Ah, oh, man, I've uh, overloaded myself here, and I, I can't uh, keep up with this schedule to produce the 13 and a half parts uh, for this series." Uh, so I just do it all in the, back in the pile. I just build it back up, and I'll come back in. But here comes summer, and so I've got uh, this is 12, and I've got a uh, hey, one. Is 13 plus the half, so two more episodes of uh, this series. Now I'll come back in and try to do it again right. Uh, you know, I, I, failure is is not a bad thing. It just means uh, 
to do it again, right? Uh, yeah. So it is important. Why? Uh, the, the Bundys fell out of uh, favor with, with many when uh, Ammon, uh, you know, weighed in on the uh, this border issue and immigration. Uh, you and I would agree with them and that uh, people uh, ought to be able to go wherever they can go and, uh, you know, if, if they're accepted. What if, if uh, where would, let's say, a whole bunch of migrants came up here, where would they go if they came here and then there was nobody there to uh, give them a job? Would they come up here? Well, they try to say they come up for welfare, this uh, social uh, protective system and all its flaws or whatever. And, and, uh, I just told you. Huh. Told me what? Said I just killed you. How'd you kill me? Well, you appeared appeared as a duck, so I shot you. Oh, good for me! Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> From the real uh, Vanna White. You know, there's a imposter here that throws out decoys. Yeah, bastard. Yeah, bastard, <laughs> bastard. <laughs> you killed that duck. Quack, quack. Kiss my quack. <laughs> I'm okay. Duck. Anyway, here's my, here's my view, my opinion on the whole thing. Um, uh, while the Bundy situation is important and interesting, I think you've got a lot more in you than uh, than this one issue. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to hear some more of that other stuff. I've done a lot of other stuff too, <clears throat> and my uh, my past cast from. Uh, you see why of what matters worldwide is not well received here because folks don't like Jose, or as one might say, Jose. Uh, oh. So I threw that back on. I, I, yeah, I want to take a little time and get out here in the world because, well, like this week, for example, I, uh, I even doing it all week to build a broadcast, sometimes that transition between these ideas uh, is what I just might describe today as Vinny speak. So anyways, this week, I, I this project of this uh this fifth wheel uh, had damage in the back, so I had to tear all this back end out. But to do that I had to move out of that section. So that means to move a kitchen outside, um, water lines, a gas line, uh the toilet, uh you know, all these problems so uh, I'm spending time doing stuff. It's pretty outside. I'm gonna be, you know, hitting the river. Looking to go to uh, to Tulsa. That's the plan so far. Uh, head up to Tulsa tomorrow to see the uh, Lost Dog sh uh, Street Band. And what, what? How far are you from Tulsa? Uh, I think it's a couple hundred miles. That's all? No, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more. Now I forget. Uh, it ain't far. Three, three, three hours or something. We're gonna stop uh, in Lost Valley up in Arkansas, uh, up by the Buffalo River. Uh, and uh, overnight camp up there, I think, Saturday. I, I don't even know when, what day they're playing. But anyways, I, last night I have friends over. and uh, Yeah, I was drink. I never drank this stuff before. Crystal State Rockhound IPA. That is some really good ale. And it comes from Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, Lost 40 Brewing. Good stuff. Yeah, what else does it say on there? Yeah, it's uh, India Pale Ale. It is delicious. There you go, 197 miles. Yeah, if I was right, a couple hundred. It ain't far. And we're going up back through the country, and like I said, up the, to Buffalo. That's a, a national river. Uh, I think it was the first national river established in America. Uh, my friend uh, Lacey, uh, she interviewed me, did an article, and some of her work also includes uh, a hog farm up there that... Uh, Factory farming, you know, then you got all this waste, uh, you know, pig crap. What do you do with it? Well, they put it in these uh, uh, reservoir things. But there's the possibility of that uh, washing down into the Buffalo River. And, uh, that, you know, would, would kill off life in there and stuff. Protecting our environment is very important, right? Um, but, but there is a line in there where uh, the government crosses over uh, intrusion. And some people support that because they think, We've got to do this. Some things are important and some things are lies. And the whole thing about the Bundy Ranches is the tortoise being hurt. And so if you can come along and make a, a legal ruling and say, uh, let, me, let, me, let me put it this way. I come up to Moriarty 
And uh, I come up and say, well, you can stay in your house for now, but I'm, uh, I'm taking you front yard. And then I'm kicking your door in before you know it. That, that's how this uh, so-called uh, justice system works. There ain't no justice, not for just us, at all. Is it right. important? Is well, it you know, and I know, and most other people probably realize whether they want to admit it to themselves or not, that the government, whoever the agents there of the government and those that create the so-called laws and regulations, don't give a crap about the tortoise, the turtle. They they are about control. So when they go there and say, okay, you can't use this land because you're hurting the tortoise, that it's a huge lie. And they know it, and you know it, but it still goes forward in that way. <coughs> Cough, but... <clears throat> Uh, let, let's talk, let's look at the tortoise. What is the actual facts? Well, okay, so many years ago when they run, uh, they moved the sheep through across the Virgin River there, along where Clyde and Bundy is at. About 6,000 some odd sheep they moved through in so many days. Crap everywhere. There was a huge population of tortoise there. You just go to other places and you can see where there's, uh, poop the tortoise thrives when you go back to the early 1900s when they about devastated the land when you know they had the floor, uh let me hit that button get out of the way um that all the the foliage you know was eaten out and most of it and um the tortoise population was huge I, i've got information on that with all the numbers um you go to places where like in the test range where they've uh, put up fence and excluded any cattle, the uh, the tortoise population uh, is devastated down to extinction level. So to say you want to protect the tortoise by uh, killing the cow, uh, you're you're killing them, killing it all, and and that's what that lie is. And why can't that be seen? Why is the Bundy saying no? Because the BLM became an well, Kiron Suckling sued. They've in, in, enforced then uh, policy upon people and steal their, their property from them. If I came to your house and uh, kicked in your door after saying, uh, oh, Grimner, I, can I just camp out in your front yard in my tent and then next thing I'm kicking your door in, what are you going to do? Are you going to just say, oh, uh, yeah, cool, man, come on in. Uh, there's the ice box, help yourself to a cold, uh, uh, what is the beers right here, IPA? How'd you get to Little Rock and get them beers would be the first thing I asked you, Grimner, but no, you, I wouldn't have a chance because what would happen, I'd I'd see the end of a, a double barrel, right? Would you be wrong in defending your property? <laughs> what, wait a minute. Let's make it official. I've got a badge. I'll just put on a badge and say, I'm from the government. I'm here to help you. Does that make it better? You say, I don't want no help. I'm not here to help you, but to help you out of what you got. Yeah. <laughs> but it wouldn't be a double barrel. It would be a pump. Okay. <laughs> just just, pump, just pump, for informational pump, purposes. Pump, pump, pump. <laughs> it don't matter. Uh, when it comes out the end, you're not counting past one anyways if you're on the other end of it. That's gun it, control, sir. It would be double lot, but it wouldn't be double barrel. <laughs> all, all, plus all equals uh, not. Uh, hey, anyway, um, okay, so you have now in this series another one and a half episodes to go. Yeah, and, and this is just a practice run for the actual next one, and I think that would probably uh, happen next uh, next fall, maybe go back into it, um, and do the, redo the 13 and a half, but I want to do it right, and so I need a lot of... Uh, time to actually go back uh, this writing business i ain't crazy about it at all I, I don't like it it requires a lot of time and effort and you know but i do apply uh not enough to be an expert i'm yeah kind of trying to make that better right 
you know, there's an obligation, and that's that's why I have to. Is um, just can't be a spraddling idiot, right? Without people, knowing what you're talking about. These people are laughing at me. Good. <laughs> good. That's good. All right. No, so so, so you're you're going to redo the entire series in a more exact and concise and what it's supposed to be. Oh yes, here. Uh, big shout out to uh, the, the Idaho Patriots. I have right here a pocket constitution in the United States signed by Cliven Bundy. And this goes on the auction block to support the uh, political prisoners. I haven't gone to see if i got any bids on it yet. Uh, uh, um, hey, put a bid in. I'll bring the link back for it if you're in support of American ideas of what it really should be. That's just the, the government is not there to help you out of what you got, but uh, to stay out of what you got. Uh, is it, it is important. Why, do, why does it matter? What matters is because who's next? Uh, shout out, Brian Hyde. You're next. Believe it. Uh, the hangman? Hmm. You don't want to be the last man standing. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to steer you in any direction. I just give you my view on... I mean, I and apparently I'm not the only one. Moose girl, yeah, uh, I get it. Thing is, we've heard this ad nauseum, and at this point in time, I, I, I don't know. I mean, what what else can be what 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 can be said that's going to improve the situation? What can be done? Um, other than I mean, okay, here it is. We're keeping it in view. Or you're keeping yeah. it in view. Uh, by 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 talking about it and, and discussing it, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's important. Uh, it, uh, obviously, there's there's importance to it, and if you let one of these things slip by, whether it's this one or any of the other ones that have gone on in various areas, uh, apparently they go after uh, certain types of people. Um, <coughs> then you're basically allowing, giving permission for them to go ahead and do whatever the frick they want. Right. Um, which, you know, we don't want them to have that, that idea, that view, and uh, that ability. Let course, me go they, back then. We got, right. we're, we're 52 minutes in, so let's run past the hour, because I started to record like this, the buttons. <laughs> anyway, so go back to 2013. Uh, I started into radio at UCY. And that came because I met James Freeland, and well, we we talked. Do you know? Do you know? And from there, I went through a lot of topics and ideas and discussions. Some sixty-six uh, broadcast uh, weeks at UCY, um, and from there I evolved through. In 2014, I'm in Vegas, and I see on Facebook what's going on up there in Bunkerville. Now I lived up in WAP. I went to school in eighth grade. I uh, I worked, I fell in love for the first time, uh, you know, the real love, uh, so it said, in uh, Glendale. I worked there. Uh, then later on, up into Mesquite, I worked there. Uh, in eighth grade, I went to school in Moapa Valley. We played football against uh, Mesquite, and I always kicked your butt. I'm tough as cowboys up there, you know. Um, so I have more of a connection. I mean, it's not like I'm just like uh, jumping on some bandwagon or something. My mom lived there in, in Moapa Valley for many years. Uh, I went back and forth over my life there. Uh, now I have a connection. I've been all over that part of the country, horseback, uh, three-wheeling, back before the days of the four-wheeler. Uh, I, I myself, I don't call myself a cowboy, but I, I you know, work cattle, um, live on the land, a farm, cut hay, all that stuff. I, I know what, uh, what life is, in a sense. I do have a connection, and as a self-proclaimed member of media, I took that duty to go up there and report on that Bundy Ranch situation and to stand in the gap. Because I don't know who coined that, but that's what I use, standing in the gap. And that's what a lot of people did to prevent a army of federal agents to come in and what would have happened if they wouldn't have been there Clive and Bundy would have been dead I'll guarantee you they had a kill list is it important should I let it drop 
No. Not no, but hell no. I won't. And I just want to keep saying it till I say it, till it's heard and, and it's, I say it right. And that's where this learning to write right or write well comes in. And I have to uh, give uh, credit where credit is due and appreciation by, by critics. Uh, Sky Reeves, the, the sheriff, uh, he said, try again. What are you trying to say here? So uh, I have, I can't just like type crap. I look back at what I write, and it's like, man, I need to t tie these together right. Uh, so I just keep trying. That's the type of person I am. I, I, I can tell you from personal experience and talking to you that sometimes the phraseologies that you use confuse the hell out of me. <laughs> that, that is Vinny speaking, and, and it is... Uh, 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 you bad. <laughs> sometimes I wonder if we're even speaking the same language. <laughs> sometimes I do it on purpose, though, you know. Yeah, well. <laughs> I like to play with words. Yeah. I got a jar full of them right here. And it's got a, it's bottomless. If I can open this thing. I got it sealed tight because you have to guard your words, right? Watch. Word, 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 word. Shut up. Got them back in there. One got out. All right. There we go. Put that back down there. Always keep your words guarded because they can be used against you. Can and will be. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then thinking about that, uh, you ever been like so mad and you like, oh, I'll kill you. Do you really mean you're going to kill him? No. But, wow, that's conspiracy right then, all of a sudden, in, uh, in federal court they always bring this conspiracy and they always have well, the super it's not right. if you're the only one there have to be two people at least to have a conspiracy yeah but can you conspire or prospire uh perspire in the conspiracy conspiracy that's if all it really is there's some more of any speak thank you very much uh whatever the actual call it they they can um well, let's say terroristic threatening would be, I guess, the actual charge. If you, ooh, I'm going to kill you, terroristic threatening. They're they're moving. I seen the link here the other day. They're moving to expand the definition of uh, um, domestic uh, violence to include a, a broader perspective. Say, if I was uh, camped out in your yard and uh, you said, "Hey, man, uh, time to move on, pal." Uh, here, let me, uh, I, I got you a lunch packed anyways. I help you get your feet under you and get you on your way. And I said, no, sir. Uh, matter of fact, uh, get out of my way. I'm coming in. You can move your pillow out on the couch. I got your bedroom. Uh, no, that's just not good, right? What would you do? No, hell no. Uh, there, there would be, it would not be pretty. <laughs> there's, there's a title. There will be blood. But no, what happens then? I say, uh, hmm. I call the police and I say, Mr. Policeman, this man right here being mean to me and want me to leave his property. And I got rights. I got rights. And they say, Mr. Sorry, you got to not be answered. Uh, Mr. Uh, where'd I go? Yeah, so you're being mean to me and. What happens? They uh, take you to jail. Domestic violence. Broader definition of this uh, domestic thing. How you like that? Uh, uh, ho hold on one second. Uh, persistent, aren't they? Let me hit a mute. Hello. Where do you go? You got to answer that, I guess. All right, so, well... <laughs> Let me see what's going on in the you chat bet. here. Come on. I'm on the oh right boy! I'll be off in just so few years. try to pull on, info out of his right. chat. Right. Says so, Cowboy so. Tech. What are the odds that a 20-year time period, something else will come up that supersedes 20-year <clears throat> time period? Or anything? Oh, lots of stuff could happen. Okay. Uh, Moose Girl says the story is what it is. It ain't and over. Remember that. Hansel quoting the military apparently says you need three people to have a conspiracy, which is incorrect, but that's the military for you. Often, usually, generally incorrect. Well, all the federal court 
charges they always have in, they always include conspiracy in all these charges and that's the one that really gets you this conspiracy which is crap they come back uh, if you beat a charge in state court the feds can often come back and uh, refile in a separate uh, jurisdiction of uh, conspiracy well you thought about it you talked about it uh, look what's going on with Matt Shea up there in uh, the Pacific Northwest when we run into an hour Grimner let me uh uh, let's close out. I know we didn't get to uh, all of it, but I appreciate you coming on to uh, to help me a little bit walk through here. And I know I didn't put it all in the right order, and that's what I'm working on, putting it all in the right order and, and condense right. it down into this. Oh, I was talking about the pocket size constitution. I want 13 and a half pages uh, when I'm done in the very revised, revised, revised. I want to make it so simple that you can read it in a couple of minutes right there. And That's my end goal. And like I said, I'm going to do it till I do it right. That's just the way I am. Well, it doesn't need to be long. The Constitution's only 1,440 words. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> They've got to revise, revise, revise to get to that. So here's this uh, get to the index at page 40. So I think uh, that's what uh, needs to come down to, uh, you know, the finalization of um, uh, my setting record, my testimony, my statement, my witness uh, in this matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, let me close out. This is uh, this has been a ponder gander. Uh, the great Grimner has come along and rode this uh, rodeo with me, talking about the Bundy Ranch situation. Uh, and it ain't over. So this will continue. Um, there, there's still the uh, appeal by the state for the dismissal with prejudice against the Bundys. They want to bring them back to trial. Uh, so it ain't over. The cows are still on the land. Uh, the cattle, that is, it, uh, it ain't over. There's still an order to uh, uh, get the cows off. It ain't over. The cow's still there. So what's good? What? Who's next and what happens next? We're going to we're gonna keep watching because it ain't over. Did I say it ain't over? It ain't over. Well, today it is over for today anyways on this broadcast uh, right here at reallibertymedia.com. Stick around on the Freakers Friday. Free is spelled with two E's. Be free and be here if you want to come along tonight and blast off with Grammy in her rocket chair 6 oh, o'clock. Oh, Grammy tonight. Oh, that's right. She was. Yeah, she said that uh, Wednesday. I forgot. Thanks. Uh, well, then come back at 11 Eastern for... The freaker, no, Moosey's going to music. It's going to be balls to the wall, right? That's right. Hey, balls to the wall at 11 told, Eastern. You know, she told me what the show was, and as usual, I've forgotten which band is playing. I, to, or what, what the venue. <laughs> to, to, what was it? Uh, foo something? Something foo? Ooh. What was it, Moosey? Foo, foo, foo. Foo, who? Oh, He'll get to us when he gets there. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So, balls to the walls tonight. Uh, and so, what are you going to do tonight, Grimner? Put your balls to the wall. Uh, and that ain't really what... Tell the folks what that really means, because people don't understand what that actually well, means. Well, it's not putting your balls that's to the wall. Right. It's you putting their balls to the wall. That's right. And that's You're what, backing them up against the wall because of uh, you're tired of them trying to constrain and control you. And and, right. and they are done, and you finished, and enough people rise up, and you put their balls to the wall. And that's what the bunnies are doing. Put there you go. balls to the walls. And that's what it's about. What what matters? That's where I started in radio. What matters? It is worldwide. And especially when this occupier upon us uh, intends to uh, dominate and control every living thing on this earth. It's bad. Okay, freakers. Freakers. Uh, today. Balls to the walls, but still be free. Now come back tomorrow for the Dork Table. That is at a, a, well, I'm going to try Eastern Time. 12 noon Eastern with Flash Somebody and he'll try to capture a hostage. Uh, I hope to be a hey, the local. big woo at the metro. Woo, yeah, big woo. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> then Sunday, this is the big day right here at Real Liberty Media. Dot com RLM radio dot XYZ. This is you definitely want to be here. Come early. About a quarter to noon, Grim sneaks in and uh, pre tunicates the blues. Shutting. That's right. Come early and come often. That's right. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, and if you got fast fingers or fat stubby ones, come along and push some buttons and play some trivia with us right here. We've got some masterminds. You, you'll you'll do well if you can beat them with the answer. Uh, then this is this is where you really need to be at noon o'clock out on the left coast towards the Pacific side of the country. Hal Anthony comes from behind the woodshed and opens a big old can of whoop ass. Again, people are confused about that. You ain't whooping your ass. You're taking them back there, putting their balls to the walls and whooping their ass. All right, get here and learn how to walk through this life and not get trampled by that beast of the occupation. And that is, again, noon out on the left coast. Hell in it. Uh, Monday, what you didn't get done on Fridays, you come back with some grim leftovers, 7 p.m. Eastern on Mondays. That's right, the great Gremner. Come get you some. It's yum yum, I'm telling you. Tuesday, we're back in a perfect world and contrasting the occupation where I sometimes most often get over here with Mr. Lou who you knew as Flash Somebody to contrast the occupation. And back again for Wednesdays, another blast off event. Get your gas on with Grammy at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And thanks for listening, folks, to the Rattle and Prattle. Say before, before you go out there, uh -huh. we, say we have, at this point in time, most days of the week, a one show on Real Liberty Media. Yes, sir. On, on Fridays, we get three, and on Saturdays, we get a couple. I mean, on Saturday, Sundays, we get two. Uh, but we would like you out there listening in that are not doing a radio show to maybe think about doing one. And if you decide, hey, I got something to say, I want to say something, I want people to hear my words, message me. Tell me you want to do it, and I'll set you all up. I'll get you going, and, and you'll be on the radio just like we are now. You who? And you know what? Uh I, I can't understand why we've not got full up on the schedule over here. Did you find it? You did? No way. Where was it? Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, uh, what, we're talking on live radio. Say hello to uh, to the world wide. Hello, world. <laughs> What's up? Hi. Uh, Grimner said hi. That's the great Grim. So we're going up to see uh, some uh, Lost Dogs uh, Lost Street Dogs. Band. Right on, and you've got uh, your name on the list, and I'm uh, I'm kind of shuffling in with y'all, huh? Yeah, yeah, we'll weasel in. What? Sure so it's in Tulsa, and when is the? Uh, uh, what day is it? Is it on Sunday? It's, it's on Monday. Ma oh, Monday, cool, cool. Yeah. And we're gonna go up and uh, stop along up by the Buffalo River, Lost Creek. Yeah, yeah, go do some hiking and stuff. Sure. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, into the world and the beautiful world. And are you going to work? Yeah. You play? You're not playing hooky? Yeah, <laughs> All right. Hey, you know what would be cool, Danny? I see. Ya. Hold on a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead, Graham. Wait. Okay. You know what would be cool? Huh? Take your uh, whatever device you use when you're out on street reporting. Yeah. I'm going and to. and uh, interview some of the people at the at the show. You know it. With, Look, I've got so I've got laminated totally paper. Different, a totally different taste of the Vinny speak. Vinny speak. Hey, I'll see you, bro. Talking to people at a music show. And right uh, yeah, Tell me come yeah, down. cool. Right on. That would be cool. Record some of that. Absolutely. Yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, cool. So, well, hey, that's uh, I've been doing this for a little while. You helped me uh, make this. Matter of fact, this is one I was just showing her. This is the first one. This is a non-laminated copy. It says press pass, and we came back together and said, uh, I said I asked none for permission and take that pass off and kiss my ass. Uh, if you think otherwise. <laughs> so, yeah, Real Liberty Media. It says official. And that makes it real. It's official. People like the word official. I don't know why, but they do. Because it's official. Official sounding. <laughs> You're official. That makes you an authority. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, they're, they're <laughs> on the list. Like, no, I got I got, I got, I got to not be on here anymore. What? I <laughs> said, so let's wrap up this show. Oh. I gotta go. Oh, okay. So we ran through the schedule and uh, we told you what it's all about. And yes, I'm going back 
uh, out in the world here just a little bit. Finish this up. What I want to do is uh, come back and uh, refocus. As you said, there's some more important stuff that I've uh, left off my duty and obligation uh, in, in, that I've self-assigned, and that is uh, the post-production for Hal Anthony and also to uh, yeah, well, for to spread the word and, and get it out there and, and uh, get people to really get involved in saying no, not just because you say so. No government at gunpoint. And I think uh, not just no, but hell no. Hell no, that's right. Anyways, thank you, Grimner, for coming along, and uh, I will push buttons. Uh, you want to go ahead and knock out this post production uh, right now, or? Because I've really got a, a a big case of the lazies, but at least we can set it there, and I'll come back to uh, revise and update the uh, R log. All right, we'll go ahead and kill the, kill the stream and, and uh, the recording. And, All right. And, well, thank you again, Grimmer, and thanks everybody for listening. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, come on in tonight and uh, get with uh, Great Graham and listen to some smashing balls on the walls, y'all. And we'll see you. Bye bye.